everybody. Artist Quarantine, Bobby Trends, TT Torres. We are here with our special guest, Little Tekka. Tekka, Tekka. I've always yeah. been to say that. Tekka, Tekka, Tekka. <laughs> I have not been drinking, Trends. <laughs> so I just say that. See you guilty. I said you crazy. Oh, I thought you said TT's been drinking. You must want to drink. <laughs> I kind of do. <laughs> But we can't drink because Tekka is not old enough to drink. Nah, man. We, uh, we got to chill out. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm just like, I've been in the house. Are you bored you, in the house? I'm you look the like house. you missed the road. <laughs> you look like you missed that road. Yeah, I miss, I'm trying to be outside. My friend, like, with my guys, I'll be outside. I'll just be by myself because that's the only thing. Um. What have you been doing in the house, though? Have you been, like, working um, on this project inside the house? I've really just been playing, like, Xbox, for real. I, I go to the studio every day still. I just go, it's just me and my engineer, though. No one, like, for anything. So. Mm. What, what, what do you play on Xbox? Call of Duty. Oh, you're a Call of Duty. You're not a Fortnite guy? Um... I really, when I started playing Fortnite, it was like, I think a year or two ago and I stopped playing. And then when I stopped, everyone else got like really good. So when I came back, it was like a skill gap. <laughs> and so you wasn't playing that entire time, you just got left behind. So I just left it behind. That's why I'm scared to jump on Call of Duty now because I feel like I, I took too much time off. So I don't, I don't, I don't want to jump back That's, on. But Call of Duty... You could you could catch back up like you can get back into your senses with Fortnite. There's too much factors like people build and stuff. Like there's people that's good at building and not shooting. So yeah, there's too many factors you got to be good at. But how many hours do you spend on Call of Duty? Like I I need to understand this because I know people because I'm not a I'm not a big gamer. But like someone like my son, right? Uh -huh. He can start gaming at one o'clock and will not stop until like four or five in the morning i have to force him off the game so i'll let him play for like two hours and then i'm like that's enough you know mm -hmm. take a break like i have to force him off but like my mom when he goes to my mom she'll be like he was gaming since one o'clock and i said mom what time did you tell him to get off the game i don't know i fell asleep it was like five o'clock in the morning <laughs> like Yo, do you do your fans know that you're on like when you're yeah. playing? Yeah, like when I get on, if I don't put my, my lobby on closed, they'll just join. Oh, they go wow. crazy. <laughs> how, old, how, old your, how old is your son? Nine. Nine. All right. So when I was nine, I was probably, I was, I was only allowed to play it on weekends. Yep. And I think that's probably why he's so obsessed because we exactly. only allowed him to play on the weekends. Exactly. So like on that, you got to remember like the Xbox. That's like where he talked to all his friends at. Yes. Me, so, so on on that Friday, as soon as he get home from Friday, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Because <laughs> he, he can't do it the whole week. So it's so when he catches up with his boys, he exactly. you hear all the conversations. That's and... that's the new outside for real. Like yeah. That's, yeah. Basically the new that's outside. been the new outside. I feel like that's been the outside for a long time. So how oh. many how many hours do you game um now? Do you do you spend a lot of time gaming? Um, I'll probably, I'll wake up probably around two in the afternoon. I'll probably get on at like three and I'll get off at like five. Probably. Okay, that's not too bad. Not bad. Yeah, I don't stay on too long because I go to the studio. I try to get there around 6 p.m. Mm. So I only really have, from when I wake up, I have like four hours to get ready. Sound funky. Wow. So let me ask you a question though. So what what about school? Cause you, you haven't graduated high school yet, right? I, I stopped doing physical school, mm -hmm. like, probably a year ago. Okay. So, the thing is, when I was in school, I was also doing online school, too. So, it was a lot. Like, to make music cut in, it would barely fit in. Like, I used to go to school and come home and then do school again. And then oh, go wow. to the studio. Like, wow. Was a lot. My goodness. So, so you're so you making so, it work. You yeah, it he's work. hustling. Wow. I had to because because I wasn't really like very school smart, so I had to put in that extra mile just so I could pass, you know. Yeah, it's crazy because you were sixteen um, 
when you did ransom right and you was like living in with your parents in long island and um when taz taylor sent you that tweet um asking you to work together did you think that that will really change your life like i know you flew out to work with him and you know if, for those who don't know who taz taylor is of course he produced for like juice world and xx and all of these uh mm -hmm. artists um did you did you know at that moment okay this is going to work or did you just blindly walk into it well prior to that moment i was getting all of my beats from youtube right and I, I always was like yo if i could get off of youtube like actually get good producers not saying there's not good producers on youtube but like you know get credible producers and stuff like hit makers i would make a hit and then when i got that tweet for real I only knew Taz at that moment because of Lucid Dreams. And then I was like, yo, what the hell? This nigga want to work with me? <laughs> I didn't know that people like knew who I was. Like, I still really don't know how big I am. So at that moment, I was just like, what? And then my mom, I told her. And then music i think it was still new to my parents at this moment because they didn't know i was making music at first so when i told her like going she was like going to la what are you talking about right now and, <laughs> and how much is this going to cost me <laughs> yeah, facts. like so i was just like you just gotta believe me like like i just kept trying to you know and then my dad the first time i went to la my dad went with me and stuff and then so tell us about your parents. Are they like um, like regular nine to five parents or did they have experience in the music industry where they can kind of talk through like contracts and stuff like that? Or were they just like regular, you know, non-music people, nine to fivers and just gambled mm -hmm. on their son? Uh, really, my dad used to do music when he was in Jamaica and he used to dance and stuff. So on the artistic side, there was a, you know an experience on my dad but on the business side of music they didn't really know anything about it that's what the was most skeptical part because they didn't want anyone to fuck me over mm -hmm. you know? like they knew i had the talent they just didn't want anyone to take advantage of me so a lot of opportunities were looked past because yeah, of trust the trust is a is a big thing yeah know, especially at 16 because you hear so many stories about these kids getting jerked exactly. it's the stories it's all the stories that stories are crazy yeah and think just think about it ransom was independent right mm. and and correct me if i'm wrong but was your first uh mixtape we love tech independent too before you went to universal or did you drop that it's after not. you signed i signed i signed to um republic like i think maybe a month after ransom came out okay so that went under universal so you have this big single that drops right and then you get yeah. this record deal from a very big reputable label so exactly. who looks through these contracts like at 16 years old you must be overwhelmed and like who do you talk to about this who do you trust you know well i really trust my manager that's like like before a manager that's really my bro you know so he he's a manager he he knows about this stuff so whenever i had questions i would go to him and just get all the knowledge that he knew and then really just try to like not be dumb with decisions like you hear about 360 deals all the time you feel me so i just try to know what's not good you know what i mean because i know everyone else around me is looking for the best interest you know what mm -hmm. i mean so like I really just go. I I had a business manager, business um lawyer too. Every artist has a business lawyer that so me always got to look out for their best interest. So we yeah. went through a few business lawyers too, entertainment lawyers just in entertainment. And entertainment lawyers, yeah, because that's the thing too. But what a lot of these young artists don't know is that, and maybe I'm giving up a jewel that I shouldn't give up. But a lot of these big big entertainment lawyers too get kickback from these major labels. So if they bring these artists over there, they kick them back. Hey, get this deal done for me and I'll kick you back something. So you sometimes you really got to take your time and be patient with your contracts and make sure you make the right decisions and you really partner up with people and lawyers that you really do trust 
and believe in. And that's not always uh, the, the go-to lawyers or the people that are already in the system. You understand what I'm saying? That's a fact. That's a super fact. That's a statement. But Who, um, are there other artists that are coming up with you right now that you that you really like that that you like maybe fans of like yourself a fan of yourself? I like all my all my friends' music go hard to be honest. Uh, my homie Costo, my homie Bell, Dago, like they all around my age too. I really I try to listen to a lot of lately. I've been listening to a lot of my own stuff to like really get that sound, like understand mm-hmm. what other people are hearing too. Right. And I try to I try to also listen to artists that's inspired by me too to get that other point of view. I was gonna say, is it to get your fans' perspective? Listening yeah. to yourself to understand it from a fan's perspective. What is it about yeah. me that they love? Exactly. Because I know why I like my music, but sometimes I try to figure out why other people do. So like listening in third person. Exactly. Mm. Like I try to listen to my music like I didn't make it. Mm. Like if someone else I love that. It, I like it. I like that too. That's hard to do too. Yeah, super hard. Yeah, because it's almost like you got to uh, separate yourself, right? Exactly. Because sometimes we can be our biggest critics and sometimes we can be our biggest fans. Yeah. And there's a very, there's a line where you become delusional with that. Yes. And it's, it's, you have to recognize a lot. I like, I like, um, I like that. I like Kid Leroy. I see you did a song with Kid Leroy. Kid Leroy is very fire. He's fire. Very fire. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that's another artist that a lot of people haven't really like, like seen yet. Like, um. But, but listen though, when they see him, when they see him, they're so, not going to stop seeing him. Trust me. One thing I like about you is that you come off as like a really good kid, you know, like, and when we talk about your peers, you also lost a lot of your peers, like X and Juice World, and, um, you know, so many people in your age bracket, what are you doing different? Like, have you learned from those deaths? Have you, have you thought about those deaths? Like, like, how do you take that? Well, death, to me, it's really, like, very, very touchy. Like, I really, I really almost take it as, like, a process thing. Like, because to me, death is, it's yin-yang with life, you know? Mm. You have to live to die, and you have to die to live, you know? So when things like this do happen, it's inevitable to happen. It's always going to happen. It, it hurts. But, like, the biggest lesson I get out of things like that is just appreciating the people around me and, like, the moments I have with those people. Because it's just, like, I remember when I used to live in Springfield, I had these group of homies. We would play on my dead end every day. And none of us knew when the last day we would play it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it just became that last day, so I just try to appreciate moments the same way I would appreciate memories. Right, right, right. That's amazing. Um, I, would, I would love to see you on this uh double XL freshman list this uh this year. I, I've been thinking about it. Um, I see that they started uh promoting this double XL freshman thing. Um, is there anybody you that you want to see on that list? Uh, I want to. I want to see Emily Chopper on the list. I think he's mad funny. <laughs> Super funny. Do you even care about stuff like that or making or making lists? No, I I, I really don't care about that. No, okay. That's that's the better question. If he cares or not. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. Do you care I, about hit? Go ahead. Like the way people rank me, it really don't. It don't matter to me. I think you should be on that list. I don't know, that's just me. Thank you. I, I think I should be on that list, too. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care about it, but deep down, you kind of do want it. If you get to it. No, it's not even that. It's just like, it's just certain spots that have to be filled by certain people. You know, like, I feel like 
it's just it would be it wouldn't be a 2019 list without Lil Tech on. Even right. if I didn't want to be on it, it wouldn't be a 2019 list at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking about. <laughs> so your your debut mixtape, um, it was on a top five Billboard, one of one of the top five on Billboard. Mm. Um, is it pressure for you um with your album to try to match that mixtape? Jeez, it might seem like this pressure. Like it would be impossible for them not to be pressure because you know <laughs> when I dropped that's all people because like I don't know what changed about these last few years. All of a sudden now people care about first week sales. Like I never cared about that until I never even like knew that was such a big thing until I did um We Love You Tech. I was like, people care about this. Like I feel like people think the sales just stop going after the first week or something. Like, right. But I feel, you know where I think that comes from? And I feel like it's journalists fault because they bloggers fault. And I'm going to use academics for an example. I feel like because they put so much spotlight on that before when you drop music, all people cared about was the music. The regular uh-huh. Fans didn't even know what a billboard chart was. They didn't even yeah. know what a first week sales was. They didn't even know about gold, platinum. They didn't care. All they cared about was just the music. Now I feel like some artists don't even get judged on the music anymore. They get judged on the numbers. So they look at a yeah. and they look at what somebody may post. Oh, this artist only did X, Y, Z, and it discredits the quality of music. So that fan or that person who could have been a fan won't even go and listen to the album because they just read that tweet. And then in their brains, they then, then brainwash and think, oh, it's trash. Well, because people don't even got their own brains no more. You know, like people, someone else got to tell you something is fire for you to even think it's fire. Like people don't, got their own opinion. They just got the masses opinion. It's like a bunch of sheep going in the same direction. I mean, because I think social media is the gift and curse of social media, right? Of the internet, because one minute, it, the internet is a great tool. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. then it also is a, a dark side to it because yeah. you use artificial intelligence that feed your feed, what they think you like. And, and it's real. And so when you see in these things and it's constantly feeding your brain, that's what you're gravitating to. And so you're not just judging the music based on what you're hearing. You're judging it based on what you're seeing or what somebody's commenting. That's so how, so can you, how, how can you comment on, on Lil Tecca if you never even heard the mixtape or the album? How can you have an opinion? Because someone on their feed got an opinion. <laughs> that's my so point. Opinion. They just share an, an opinion, but they never gave it a fair shot. So yeah. I think, you know, it take it takes more artists, you know, like like you and, you know, a new artist to, to encourage, you know, your generation to like be leaders, not sheep and go listen to the music, right. spend quality time with it before you judge it based on what somebody's telling you it is. Definitely. You know what I mean? What do you miss most uh, about um, not being outside anymore? What well, I miss most? I miss being with the friends I got. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you have, like, the same friends for, like, the friends that you, like, grew up with, like, in school and all of that, in your neighborhood? The friends thing with me is just, like, a process of elimination. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that. Like, I start off with, like, a bunch of friends. And, like, I just be waiting on people to, like, do, like, funny stuff. Because mm. I don't really, to me, the less people around me is the less people I got to deal with. Because in every Dang. group I'm in, I'm, like, the heart of it. I'm, like, the glue of it. So whenever people have problems, I'm always the mediator or whatever. The fixer. Exactly. So I'm just with the same niggas that didn't fuck me over yet, to be honest. I love that. The process of elimination. What's your sign? A Virgo. Oh, that's why I like you. My like, son's a Virgo. Oh, I'm a Leo. Style. Yeah. My sister's a Leo. Yep. And Leo and Virgos get along. It's yeah, something you, about their. Say about Leos. You got anything to say about Leos? <laughs> Leos yeah. and Virgos, they have this um connection. They understand each other. Yeah, I was born on the Leo cusp too. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, my son, my son's a Leo, and we have this like this bond. I mean, my son's a Virgo. I'm sorry, but it's like this bonding, this understanding that we have, and we do the process of elimination thing too. So it's like if you cross us, it, it's 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 a wrap. Gang. No, for a fact, because there's <laughs> there's no reason why it shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. So I'm also hearing um, you have a uh, you and um, Internet Money um, have a mixtape coming. Oh, facts. That's what the the out of love was. That was like the opener. Yeah, I was gonna tell me what's the inspir. Tell me about the inspiration for that. The inspiration of it, I really just wanna, I really just wanna like drop music for real and we were supposed to you don't know it's crazy that first tweet that tez ever did to me was about a project the whole reason why i even went to la was for an internet money project mm -hmm. and then we ended up turning some of those songs into singles so right now we just finishing where we started yeah do you feel like it was a lot easier when you was just dropping your music before you got signed on YouTube, SoundCloud, like you could just freely just drop, drop whenever you want. Um, but now that you're signed to a major, it's like everything is different. Like you have to plan it. It's not as. Yeah, crazy. like I see, I see when I was independent, I see it as me like having my wings, mm. you know, like I was just able to do anything I want at any time. I could drop a song at 4 a.m. on a Sunday mm -hmm. if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, any, any particular artists you look up to? Like your favorites? Like, which, like what's your top three? Speaker Knockers, Chief Speaker Key. Knockers. Chief Key. Um, oh, yeah, I can see that. I love the Speaker Knockers. Uh, well, 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 speaker Knockers, fire. Yo, I feel bad when my son was like two. He used to be like, Mommy, play the pika knuckles. Play. I used to be like, No. <laughs> I used to be like, No. He used to be like, It's the speaker knuckles. And I'd be like, <laughs> That's crazy that he used to say that. Super. That he was super really talented. Like he was so my third, probably LA Capone. Wow. LA Capone. All right. I rock with Alec Capone. Have you met Chief Keith? Uh, no, I haven't met Chief Keith yet. Not yet. I actually interviewed Chief Keith. Um, he was the same age as you at the time. Right. Yep, he was a cool kid. Gangster. Wanted to be older than what he really was. I was supposed to DJ one of his shows that just passed, but it got canceled for whatever reason. I DJ just show in the Paramount, remember? And I introduced you to my son. My, we was downstairs with uh, with Flip De Niro. Oh, the detector holes. Oh, that was yeah, fun. Yeah. That was a big show. I saw um, your DJ had his own smoke machine. You had the confetti flying. It was like New Year's Eve in there. It was crazy. I was lit. <laughs> it was lit in that there. Was that was a great show. I enjoyed myself. Shout wow. to David D for setting that up. Thank you, David D. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you quarantining at? In in New York or LA? In New York. Oh wow! So you really stuck stuck in a house? You've been inside side. Nah, for fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you gonna? Do you plan on working with um Cole Bennett again to do some more videos? Oh yeah, hell yeah. So he's super creative, right? Cole Bennett, yeah, nah, Cole. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't much words you could describe. They ain't much. Damn much words you could use to describe his creativity. Yeah. How did you connect with him? Well, one day my manager was he was just like, yo, Cole wants to do a video for you. And I was like, okay, what? And then <laughs> the song we were supposed to do was Molly Girl. And then when we went to DR, we ended up doing Ransom. Wow. Wow. That's big. Wow. But I I already knew people in Lyrical Lemonade. I just didn't know Cole yet. Like I knew um Lil Jake. He DM'd me and then we did a a QA for the Lyrical Lemonade website. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first ever like, interaction I had with them. When you mm -hmm. got that call for that interview, that was that must have been pretty exciting too. 
Right. Yeah, that was really exciting. I was like, all right, this is lit. Yeah, like it's moving for real now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you plan on dropping the album in May? I think so. I'm hearing. I'm hearing it may be dropping in May. No, nah, because I'm really bad with dates, but I think that's a fact. I think I'm speaking facts on that. And, and what's the name of it? Do is it? Do they really love me? Do they really love you? Yeah. Do they really love you? Do you really think that they really love you? Let's talk like, about that title. I don't really think. I don't really think they love me as much as they they can. Hmm. What do you yeah. mean by that? Like, they say they love me, but. I know they could love me more. Mm. So it's like, do they really love you? Or like, are they just saying it? Mm. Because it's easy to say, but like, I don't feel it. It's a world where they build you up and then they tear you down, especially for women. It's like this space of like, they build you to the superstardom level, right? Then when you get to this level, they just start to tear you down. It's because they at first they want you to win and then they start hating on you. Then they don't want you to win no more because you become more successful than them. Is that what it is? No, nah, it's because at first they see you as like a gem. Like nobody knows about you, but you deserve this position to them. You know I mean, like you're better than all these people at the top. And then when you get to that position, it's like those same people, they don't know what to expect from you anymore. We see artists reach this mega star level, right? And then we see kind of like fans just turn. A lot of the fans, you like, you can't take a lot of the stuff they take, like they say seriously. You feel me? Cause like they just be trolling. Like, like they're really just like a bunch of little kids. You feel me? Just saying stuff. Like sure. I've responded to fans that have said crazy stuff about me. And their response is, I just wanted to motivate you to do better. Yeah, that's, that's how it was going. This, this surprise that you answered. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Like, this surprise like, that you they, answered. A lot of people only say these, like, these crazy stuff because they think that artists not going to see it. And yeah. They just, the most they going to get is four views from one of my stands hating on them, you know? Like, yeah. And they screenshot and send it to all their friends, like, oh, exactly, shit, I'm going to hit back. Right. <laughs> I don't. I really don't care what no one says to me over the internet. Like, like not one bit. Like, yeah. it's, it's really the internet. Like, yeah. Like, if you don't get on the internet, you won't see it. Like, I just. I don't even be on Instagram and know that like that. I usually just post and get off. Yeah. yeah. I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'm glad that you are like that. You know, cause, cause you know, I just look at some of these artists like. You know, um, NBA young boy, you know, he tweeted like he, he feels like, you know, he wants to kill himself and he, this is his last album. Like, I just look at some of the stuff that some of these uh, artists say and and I look at like how they're obsessed with reading the comments and responding to people. And like that stuff really, really can take you to a dark place if you allow it to. But this is how I take it, though. Like. I was hated on my whole even since I had 10,000 followers, you know, so. It's, it's going to be there. You feel me? Like, people can't show you love without other people showing you hate. So I look at all these great people, and I look at how much people hated on them, and then I look at how great they were, and it makes sense. Mm. Like, if people aren't hating on you, like, literally, like, trying to bring you down, you have to be somewhere for people to try to bring you down from. Yeah, you got to be special. You got exactly. something, like, something about you has to be special. Exactly. So I take all of that, like, when people hate on me, it low-key, like, make me feel good. You know what I mean? Because, like, I've been around so much fake love. That's like, all right, I fuck with the real hate. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. That's good. Where, where do you want, where do you want um, music to take you? like next like what's the like what's the next step like what, what do you want to do passive income to be honest bro i really started rapping bro because i wouldn't be able to get a job with nothing that has to do school related you know what i mean <laughs> like i just wanted i just wanted to do something that i would be able to wake up when i want and do something what i up. do exactly you know so 
bro, I want to get to the point, bro, like, where I don't even have to drop another song. Like, yeah. I just want passive income, bro. Like, and, and, and that starts with being smart with the money that you are making, like smart investments and stock market exactly. and, you know, tech companies and like exactly. people teaching you outside of rap music. Exactly. Like, bro, I'm trying to start my own clothes brands and stuff. You feel me? Like, I see Worldwide Youth. You're doing a uh, merch with Worldwide Youth. Exactly. Like, this is, bro, this is way bigger than rap. You know what I mean? Like, Y'all might interview me two years and I might be the CEO of a, a Xbox type company. You feel me? And y'all like, like how how was it developing your first console? You feel me? Like this is way bigger than rap. Like but I love that. But like, you know, that's why I admire people like um Chameleonaire, you know, and I admire people like Ryan Leslie and you know, people that were able to come into the rap game but turn this into something way bigger you know oh, will yeah. i am will i am is an incredible entrepreneur and he has opened up incredible opportunities for brown and black kids all over america with his um stem programs and all the stuff that he does in tech just build you hip-hop is just was the foundation exactly to build everything else but you have to have the right people to put the help you put the puzzles together word because like it's like this if you surround if all your friends is rappers you're gonna become a rapper i mean if all your friends is actors you're gonna be an actor it's like you reflect your surroundings so if you have more if i'm an artist and i have more like real estate people more than artists around me Sooner or later, I'm going to go into the real estate direction right. and because that's just how it works. Surround yourself around greatness. What, what you want to be, you got to surround yourself yeah. around. Yeah. Makes but it's, it's amazing that you're thinking like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy at the age that, you're, that you are, that you're thinking on that level, you know, because a lot of artists your age just look at the right now. Oh, I'm good. This money is always going to roll in. This show money is always going to be here. Like, look at my neck. Like, look at my neck. I have my mom and my dad gave me this chain for Christmas two years ago, bro. Like, like, I'll be buying some expensive clothes and stuff, but these rappers, like, that don't have it really be dropping like 50 bands on a chain. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, like, all my chains that I could have bought are still in the bank. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I could use all that money to go buy something else that will make me double that. I mean, like niggas dropping hundreds of thousands in the club, you could have bought a house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. And I always tell my mom this, bro. Like, Preach. if you think if you think normal, you're just gonna be a normal person. You know what I mean? Facts. Like facts. Because like, the way you think replicates your reality. You know I mean? And I had to think myself out of certain boxes before I got out of certain boxes. Mm. It like that and that's that's wow. as real as it can get wow. like, I, that like i can't even say anything better than that that's as real as it is going to get because that is the honest to god truth if you don't think yourself out of certain boxes you will remain there okay and that is a fact and i'm so glad that you're thinking on that higher level and i hope when you do um develop that that console and that that xbox and all of those <laughs> nah, great that things was just an example no i'm just saying because one day you will develop <laughs> nah, these things nah, for real. and i'm <laughs> like one day you will i'm not saying that you won't i'm just gonna be like hey remember me so um yeah i'm i'm trying to get you to invest in this idea so um come on over here and uh lend some of those um come put some capital up over here for me <laughs> Well, listen, um, Lil Tekka, everybody, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, everybody, don't forget, he's dropping. Do they really love you, May? We don't really know the date, but, you know, we're, we're, we're told around May. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, man. Keep doing your thing. Be safe. Thank you, guys. And thanks for hanging out with us. I enjoyed it. I really, I really enjoyed this interview with you. Thank you. I really enjoyed it, too. Thank you. Come back again.
Of course. Bye. 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 Bye.